is definitely a special time that we're in now. We never have been this way before, never have been here before. So it really, really, as we say in the military, behooves us to hear what the Spirit of God is actually saying to us at this particular season as we see the signs, the signs of the times are everywhere. And you know, we chose for a theme Tonight, we pray that it will go with you into this next year. But this is something that has come from the Holy Spirit to exhort and encourage the people of God, those that are a part of the faith. There's a difference between just ordinary faith and the faith. We are a fellowship of the faith. That's what makes us unique. That's what makes our fellowship so unique. Fellowship meaning intimate participation. If you're not intimately participating in the things the Spirit of God is doing, you're not a part of the fellowship. We don't take that word fellowship lightly. And as we move into this next season, 2013 on up to 2019, seven year span out, we're going to have to have more than just a testimony. We're going to have to have the faith as a seed to sow. I was talking to some of the pastors tonight that a lot of leaders are running out of seed. They're running out of seed to sow. And I think Bishop Smith is the one said that we were discussing somewhere along these lines that when you run out of seed and you don't have anything else to sow, you start making up stuff. You're going to have to have the right kind of seed to sow in this hour because it's something special and supernatural that's going on. At the same time you're sowing, you're, you're reaping at the same time. In fact, uh, those that are sowing are catching up with the reapers. It's supernatural stuff. You get in two rains at once, the latter and former rain. It's a special time. It's a time where you must sow the right seed and have sown the right seed in order to be prepared to receive your harvest in this hour because unless you receive the harvest in this hour, you won't have enough to go on with. The faith that was once delivered, and I said that many people are missing History, they're going to miss it. And the theme for this night gathering is don't miss history. Tell your neighbor that. It's a possibility that a lot of good folk are going to miss history. What God spoke about in Genesis, we've got to understand what God is really doing. What God is really doing in time 
He's doing the same thing he started in Genesis 1, 26. said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. He's dealing with about three different kinds of women here, and we need to know the difference between these women. There was Eve, and there's another one, the church, and there's the, the woman in the vision in the book of Revelation, and then the wife of the Lamb. We need to understand that all of these things are symbols and very significant for our time. That God spoke about Eve would carry the seed, and we're dealing with some things now that God spoke about then, it has come to fruition. We've got to deal with what we have now. And unless you understand what God is doing, what the Spirit of God is doing, he's doing the same thing he started in the book of Genesis. He needs a man. God, he needs a man. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and say it. He can't rest until he finds somebody to rule. In Revelation 12 talks about some things, about these are four women that are mentioned. As I said, Eve and the church and the woman in, in the vision and the wife of the Lamb. And, and these are related to God's eternal plan. Now, this is what I want to say. We need to understand the position the church occupies today. It's not just going out and doing what a lot of folks are doing. And listen, I don't have time to play. How about you? I don't have time to compete with people or trying to compete. I, so many preachers are competing, but I'm not in competition. You want to preach? Preach. I try. I'm not in competition. I'm not jealous. I'm not envious of what you Go ahead. If you can do it, do it. Let me support you. I'm not envy and jealous and bitter because maybe, perhaps, maybe you can explain the thing a little bit better than me. What I'll do, I'll get you to help me and let you do the explaining. Right. One thing Henry Ford said, he said, the smartest man in the world will get all the wisest people around him and use them. Henry Ford said, I don't know nothing, but I know somebody that do, and I got enough sense to get them around me. And so I felt that's a good philosophy. Get people around me that can do certain things that perhaps maybe I need a little more grace to do. In fact, they may be the grace that God sent. See, we've got to be sharp in the spirit and understand how to employ the fivefold ministry. The day pastors have to be wise because God is sending people to him that got more sense than he got. He need to be satisfied he got the spiritual direction, but other folk got more sense than he got. And people that are in the church has got to understand that God will send people with more sense than they got to move this mission forward. Y'all better stop be looking at me like that. Don't look at me in that tone of voice. We've got to work as a team. I did a study on the Navy SEALs, how that they are team-oriented. How that when they go out, those are volunteers now, but they go through rigorous training. And one philosophy they have is that even if their comrades fall in battle, they're going to bring them home. They never leave them on the battlefield. If he's dead, we're going to bring him home. I mean, they have that kind of camaraderie. And so what I said, listen, everybody's going to come home, whether they are alive or raptured, we're all coming home. Because we're a team. We have to understand that we're a team. These pastors, amen, we're a team. We're a team in the gospel. This is the fellowship of the gospel. And therefore, in the next seven years, we've got to build and develop the team to work havoc on the devil. We haven't been used to working as a team. But I'm in the military and see, your team member, he's got to have character. You've got to be able to trust them. Why? Because you've got to rely on them. It could mean life or death. You can't have people that are not determined. Cry babies and stuff like that. I don't know why I'm getting into all of this stuff. You've got to have people that are competent, people that you can rely on, people that will tell you the truth. You see, communication is very important. So those that carry the communication, the radios, they have to carry a little bit more. And those that carry the M50s, they have to carry a little bit more ammunition. So they are kind of slower. So the other team members have to sort of help them carry 
the rounds and some of them have to help them carry some of the, the communication equipment. But that man that's got that radio is very important. Communication in this hour is very important. If you mess around and get the wrong communication, if the pastor get the wrong communication from one of his team members, it could mean that he could abort mission. That's why we got to overcome all this jealousy, overcome all this inferiority, this fear of being exposed. We've got to be honest and truthful and begin to rely on God's grace. We've got to begin to say, yes, I'm weak in this area, but God said, my grace is sufficient. I'm going to preach this thing. God says, my grace is sufficient. You've got to exercise faith and get what you need to be what God has called you to be and don't miss history. Some people going to miss history. Listen to me now. God's purpose for creating man, what was it? God says it in the book of Genesis. Let us make man in our image and let them have dominion and let them rule. I want you to tell somebody, playtime and immaturity is over. You better believe it. The stuff that we were carrying on in 29 and 10 and 11 on up here to 12, it's over as of tonight because things have shifted. I preached Sunday that one of my intercessors called me and said, Apostle Henderson, I was praying and interceding and the Lord gave me a word for you. He said, come on and tell me. Intercessor says, now, 2013 is going to be a fresh year for you. And we are praying and interceding for that. And every negative thing come to you, everything that's negative, you take that and turn it into something positive. It says, now, apostle, you know that you have the power of choice. I said, that's right, I do. And you can choose to receive that thing that's negative or you can turn that negative around and turn it into something positive. I said, good God Almighty, that thing went off in me like a firecracker. I said, you don't have to receive that negative report. You don't have to receive that negative look. You don't have to receive that negative attitude. You can take that negative attitude and turn it into something positive. I'm telling you something, those negative electrons coming to you, you remain positive, and when it hits you, turn it into light. Somebody shout hallelujah. Don't you receive nothing negative this hour. Pastors, don't receive nothing negative in your church. Come on, move out the negative folk. Move out the negative talkers. Turn that church into something positive. Refuse it. Why? Because God said overcome evil with good. Y'all ain't talking to me. Joseph turned that thing into something good. He said, you meant it for me for evil, but God meant it for me for the good. God, good God Almighty, left him in prison, but down in prison he prospered. Why? Because he didn't have a negative attitude. He had a positive mental attitude, and the church is going to have to have a positive mental attitude in 2013 because many negative things are going to take place. Touch somebody say turn it into positive. Somebody say, well, somebody hate me, turn it into positive. They talking about turn it into positive. They stabbing my back, turn it into positive. They jealous, turn it into positive. Overcome evil with good. Come on, be more than a conqueror. Come on, somebody, do like Jesus. Turn that thing into that which is positive. They put him on the cross, thought they killed the Son of God. But three days, he turned that thing into something positive went back to heaven and sent back the Holy Ghost which is the invisible Jesus and you're supposed to have him tonight 
the street, people said, put it in the positive. Turn it in the positive. 